Hey everybody, Ace Channel Liam here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to the Pokemon Wants to Battle Tag 2020. I know what you're thinking. Where's the 2019 battle tag? You have to blame Toby for that one. Normally he does them at the end of the year, but this time he decided to do it at the start of the year. So we've missed the year out and it looks really annoying, but hey, who am I to judge? Now, I know the question that you're genuinely asking, which is, what the fuck is this? The Wants to Battle tag is just a yearly tradition, I guess some of us do in the Pokemon community, where Toby sets out a bunch of questions, tags a whole bunch of people, all those people answer the questions and tag other people, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And eventually I get forced into doing it because everyone else is doing it and going, Liam, you were tagged in the first video. Why haven't you done it yet? In fact, let me uh, just tell you an actual direct quote from Birdkeeper Toby himself. Hey man, I liked your tour top 10 Alola Pokemon video. Where is your wants to battle tag though? <laughs> it's here, Toby. It's here. All right, I'm doing it. That was my phone. Oh dear. So yeah, you get the premise, I'm going to answer the questions, then I'm going to tag three people who I'd like to see answer the questions as well, and then you guys can basically bother them until they actually upload it, which they won't, but it's nice to think that they would. <laughs> okay, question one is a question I've answered like a million times, which is why did you choose your YouTube name? And I, I just wanted a Pokemon related name. That's it, when I made my channel and I thought I'm going to make Pokemon videos, I just thought... What's a Pokemon related name? Oh, I should probably choose a trainer class. But I thought I won't choose Juggler because I can't juggle. I won't choose like Punk Guy or whatever because I, I'm not that into punk. Like I like some of it, but you know, I'm not that much into it. Uh, I didn't want to choose like Fire Breather. I didn't want to choose Bird Keeper because who'd pick a twatty name like that? So I just went with a nice, simple, straightforward Ace Trainer Liam and here we are. How wonderful. And sometimes it annoys me that my name's a bit long and very Pokemon centric, which really like meshes me into Pokemon and I can't really get away from it, but I've just kind of accepted my fate now. Ace Trainer Liam, I am, and Ace Trainer Liam, I always shall be. Question two is what is your favorite Pokemon game? Now, if you'd asked me that before November last year, I would have said Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In fact, if I answered that question in any of the previous tag videos, I probably said Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But that has all changed thanks to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield are officially my favorite Pokemon games of all time. I love everything about these games. I love the gyms, I love the gym leaders, I love the region, I love the new Pokemon they introduced, which I'm still struggling to decide which ones are my favorites and which ones aren't, because there's so many cool Pokemon in this region. The story's a bit lacking, but then Pokemon stories have never been super duper in depth. You can say what you want about some of them, but I mean, Gen 5 was pretty in depth, but other than that, it's all very much like evil team bad, must defeat evil team for the end of the world, win the Pokemon League in the meantime, because you know, gotta keep up with your sports. <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield does an amazing job of making the gym challenge seem important. Like in every other game that has gyms, and even in Alola with the trials, it never feels that important. It just feels like something else to do whilst you figure out what the evil team's doing and then you sort that out in your own time and, you know, it's just a detour and then you end the game effectively with the Pokemon League or at least the main part of the story. Whereas in Pokemon Sword and Shield, it's important. It's valuable. People come and pay money to sit in arenas and watch gym battles and to watch the championship battles and that makes it feel like an important event and it feels like you're building a career going through the Pokemon region becoming an actual celebrity on the way. It's really, really freaking cool. Not to mention the wild area makes the world of Pokemon feel alive. Like, okay, it's one giant area and I get that and some people's criticisms is, well, it's just one giant area, really. It's not like every route's a wild area, but the routes still have Pokemon on them and quite a few different species of Pokemon walking around in the overworld. The wild area is absolutely bloody massive, though. Like, it takes you a good few minutes to get from one side to the other and I can really appreciate that for Pokemon's first attempt at doing an open world area. Give them time to learn their stuff man. But for me, the wild area is really impressive anyway. Like I just, there's just Pokemon everywhere. There's different weather in different parts of the areas. And I just really think it's so freaking cool. My only genuine gripe with Sword and Shield is that of all the Pokemon that are in the game, every single one of them has a Pokemon camp animation of them running and of them walking. And yet we can't have Pokemon following us. I don't understand that. Like I don't get what's so difficult about making those running and walking animations apply to a single Pokemon walking behind the player and like trailing the player. Like we have Pokemon in the wild that will run after the player, so obviously you've got some kind of tracking in place where the player character can be tracked by a Pokemon. Why can't it be a friendly Pokemon following us? I don't get why that can't be a thing. I'd honestly rather have that than see other people riding around in the wild area when you connect to the internet. Like I don't need to see 
300 of the same player character in the same Rotom bike outfit running around, like cycling around the map. I don't need that. I'd rather see a Pokemon walking behind me. And especially if I'm on my bike, I want to see that Pokemon putting pedal to the fucking metal and running with me. Sprinting, in fact. But hey, other than that, solid 9.5 out of 10. Sword and Shield are my favorite games. If you don't like it, can eat those. Don't eat them. I, I need these so I can flip other people off. That please don't eat them. Question three is, what is your favorite evil team? For me, that's super simple. It's Team Rocket because they are so simple. Like, you've got so many evil teams nowadays that are like, I want to use this Pokemon to give energy to the entire region, or I want to use this Pokemon to travel to a galaxy where there's just me, or I want to use this Pokemon to flood the Earth, which would effectively ultimately kill all wildlife. Even the fish eventually would probably die because there'd be some problem with the weather because the earth is flooded. It's a silly idea, Team Aqua. And Team Magma in reverse, you're dumb as well. If the world has no water, you're dead, mate, dumbasses. Whereas Team Rocket are super simple. They want to steal Pokemon to make money. They want to steal powerful Pokemon so they can beat other people's Pokemon, so they can steal those Pokemon, so they can make money. They're just criminals out to make money. And it's super simple, but super duper effective. Plus black is really slimming and like, that, that helps me out tenfold. Question number four is, what should your viewers expect from you this year? 2020, I'm hoping, is going to be our year. We've had a fantastic start to this year. Like, thank you to all the new people that have turned up on the channel. We've had, like, 3,000 or 3,500 new subscribers in January, and we're only halfway through, so thank you for that. In terms of what you can expect in 2020, a lot more of the same. You can expect Form Fight every Tuesday. You can expect Metromania every Thursday. By the way, the new series just started, so, you know... Go, go, go check it out because you want to keep up with it because Metromania is freaking awesome. If you like Form Fight, I can't stress enough, you'll like Metromania. Of course, we're going to continue with Siri Battles. And if you haven't watched Siri Battles, please do. It's my favorite thing that I make. Like, I love that you guys love Form Fight, but I love making Siri Battles. It's a chance once a week for me and my girlfriend to just hang about, have a laugh, play some Pokemon with ridiculous sets and stuff, and just have a great time. Check out Siri Battles, the bags are fun. I'm gonna keep making the content that long-time viewers have always loved, so your top 10s and Nuzlocks and whatnot. And I do have a series that I've been teasing for a very long time. I'm just waiting for the English dub of the anime to come out, and then I can really get started on it. In fact, before I made this video, I actually went on Fiverr, got myself a little jingle. Well, it, it's going to be made. I'm, I don't know if it's made yet, but... Give the guy a chance. So expect a lot more fun videos on this channel this year. In fact, let me know down in the comments what your favorite series is on this channel. And then do me a favor, go and watch one of the series on my channel that you've not watched yet. So if you've watched Form Fight and only Form Fight, go check out Metromania or Siri Battles or vice versa. And then after you've watched that, come back and leave another comment telling me what you thought of that series. So, you know, drop me a comment saying, man, I, I love Form Fight, I watch it every week. And then leave me another comment saying, hey, I watched Siri Battles for the first time and actually I quite like them. Or I thought they sucked, you know, whatever. Let me know. Question number five is why did you start this channel? Basically, I started this channel because I just got back into Pokemon maybe about a year prior to thinking about making a channel. I'd been watching content for the likes of Jay Wits and Dookie Shed, two of my absolute favorite content creators. And I was like, these guys are so passionate about this stuff. Why don't I feel like that about anything? Why is there nothing that I'm passionate about? I like Pokemon. Maybe I should make videos talking about it. Maybe some of that passion will come out. And lo and behold, it did. And I'm happy. <laughs> like, I know it's not the most exciting reason to start a YouTube channel, but it gave me something to do. It gave me a hobby. And look what it's grown into. It's been fantastic. It's been a hell of a ride. I mean, in fact, in about nine days time, my channel will be five years old. It'll be five years since I uploaded my first ever video. And that's crazy to think that we're still here, like still going strong, having a better time than we've had since like 2016. So the channel's alive and well, and that's really, really cool. I mean, to think that I've been living on my own for three years, which is pretty insane. It's crazy, and it's all thanks to you lot watching the vids. Number six is, oh, Toby's actually put same someone. Name someone with similar or less subscribers that you think your audience would enjoy. Now, this channel isn't a Pokemon channel, but I think it's a channel you'll very much enjoy. So a guy named Ed, who is one of my absolute best friends, has run a channel for several years called Gamehog Games. And that channel did slip down his priority list a little bit over the last year or so, just because he does a lot of editing work for a lot of bigger YouTubers, and it was more important to focus on the work that was paying his bills than the channel that's sitting there not really doing as much for him as he'd like it to. Not to mention he'd kind of lost that creative buzz and that 
is something that affects a lot of us and it's a really horrible thing to go through. Like, burnout is horrible. But literally, in the last week or so, Ed has finally got that passion back, that spark, and has started making content about his favorite anime of all time, which is known as Sorceress Stabber Orphan, which you may not have heard of. It's been amazing to see Ed have this creative buzz back, and I want loads of you to go over to that channel, go and watch his content that he's just uploaded. He's uploaded a prologue of the audiobook for uh, Sorceress Stabber Orphan, and also done a roundup of what Sorcerer Stabber Orphan is about in the space of three minutes. So if you've got three minutes spare, go give it a watch. But yes, go and support Ed over at Gamehog Games. The link's down in the description. Just give him some love because now that he's got that creative kind of fire back, I want to see that continue. And to do that, we need you guys to show him loads of support. And finally, tag three people that you would like to see also do this tag video. And the three people that I'm going to tag are Hoodlum, Callum, Patters, and Game Boy Lou. Do the tag. Do it you bastards. So that'll do it for the wants to battle tag for this year and kind of last year because there isn't a 19 one. Really annoying Toby. Go check out the full playlist down in the description below if Toby has remembered to update it. And of course hit like, subscribe if you enjoyed and all that and use code ACE for money off G Fuel but until next time I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.